Hi traders, I'm Ken Calhoun from TradeMastery.com. What about this past week's news with Amazon buying out Whole Foods markets? Just take a look at the stock charts in the grocers like Kroger's, KR, or even Walmart and Target down sharply on the buyout news. Now lots to cover in this week's episode, so stay tuned, coming right up. See, we're still at 4480. Thanks, Tolly, for being here. What else is going on? So the gold instruments like GDX and Nugget and Newmont and Barrick are all down. So I'm not going to trade gold next week. I will trade dust on a breakout, though. I'm going to go in long and dust on a breakout if it does keep going up. Uh, oil instruments are all down. Crude is down. USO, UCO, oil. So nothing exciting going on in oil or gold. Both of those commodity sectors are down which is kind of an inverse correlation in the stock market. So we may see a recovery in the stock market. My S&P levels, thanks for the reminder, R1 level on the S&P as last week is 24.52. And the reason for that is I want to wait for it to get out of this dang box trading range we've been in the last couple of weeks. So I'm rounding up to just over 24.52, designed as a false breakout filter to avoid, potentially avoid a false breakout. Because what you'll often see the market will come up to a new high and then go sideways and drop, right? Like here, right? It's a cut pattern. It came up to new high, went sideways, just enough to get the newbies in, then crashed and stopped them all out. And then, of course, to rub salt when it runs up without them. Similarly, you should expect the same wacky behavior out of the stock market at every new high. So anticipate that there may be a bearish reversal or a false breakout at the new high right near the 24.48.49 area. So for that reason, that's why I'm using 2452 before leveraging in on any larger share size on my swing trades. S1 I'm using is 2412. And the reason for that is that would be, again, a two-week low just underneath it with a small false breakdown filter. So 2412 is S1, 2452 is R1 for the S&P for the week ahead. So. Let's get our pregame show underway. Welcome to another episode of our Trading Week Ahead broadcast. I'm Ken Calhoun, your host, coming at you live straight out of Colorado Springs here on a bright and sunny Saturday, June 17th, 27. Anyway, if you've got questions, I've got answers. Go ahead and hit me with your best shot, traders. Welcome to our Trading Week Ahead broadcast. I had a question from Bill saying, thanks again for all your training, Ken. You're welcome, Bill. You've been with me for years. I appreciate that. You've mentioned many times that I don't go long until the S&P breaks over the R1 that I give us each week. For my clarification, does that mean on a gaps and breakouts, I don't uh, keep those trades on as a swing trade or more of a day trade unless the S&P is over the R12? Uh, what I, and that's a good question. I will still trade within ranges, but I trade larger share size. I'm all about the position sizing and the scaling. So if the S&P is not, it's currently in congestion box. I'm not going to do any large 500 or 1,000 share trades uh, for swing trading unless the S&P breaks above my resistance trigger, which is 24.52 as it was last week. And that's a good resistance trigger. I'll still day trade scalps for breakouts uh, intraday uh, within uh, a congestion in the S&P, but I'm not going to put on any heavy, heavy share size in my swing trades unless the S&P breaks to new highs because that's when the odds get better but institutional traders will hammer away at it. So, good question. Well, and yeah, if you look at Kroger, boom, epic big drop. If you look at Whole Foods, big buyout from Amazon yesterday, right? So, that's the story stock of the week. Good question from a trader, Ricard. If we break through R1 this week, do I make adjustments to it? No, I only set major support and resistance triggers on a weekly basis. I'll go in long on large size if we start to continue up above the resistance one level and continue up. If, however, it consolidates and pulls back, then go back to cash. But I don't reset the R1 except on a weekly basis because that's as often as major market trends occur in the S&P. That's a smart question, so thanks. Before we look at the markets, uh, so far I just uh, did this survey this last week and so far I have 127 responses. I wanted to say thanks for all of you, a uh, vast majority of you rating 
it was kind of ballsy to ask, uh, what do you think about my honesty and trustworthiness and speaking skills and all that kind of stuff. But I wanted to get your honest, anonymous feedback. And thanks for that. Uh, looks like the only thing that you're looking for improvement in is value and pricing and also course selection and variety. Uh, looks like a couple of areas for improvement. But the strengths, honesty, trustworthiness, technical trading expertise, easy to understand, can help you trade better, teaching and speaking skills. So thanks so much. I'm working on developing new courses for everybody. So that is in the mix. This is the type of chart I like to trade. But I like just simple, strong, clean, 45 degree angle, multi-week breakouts. Makes my life easier as a trader. We already talked about the Whole Foods and Kroger's uh, situation. For intraday trading, the types of charts that I like are ones like this. It's got a reasonably consistent uptrend and a nice strong at least 50 cents, 80 cents a dollar breakout. I don't like the cheap stocks that only run 20 or 30 cents because then you've got to overtrade thousands of shares to make any money with them, which makes your upfront risk far too great. So that doesn't make sense. It makes a lot more sense to trade things like this or like, you know, it'll go from a whole number support to right under a whole number resistance. And my goal is to scoop 30 to 50 cents out of the open range breakout. Another quick tip, always be sure you're using the whole numbers and the 50 cent increments for the cheaper stocks as well, but whole numbers. So a good day trading strategy I like to use in my own trades is to buy at say the 20 or 30 cent level above a whole number and then sell the 80 cent level or 90 cent level if I'm lucky enough for it to go up that far, but sell 70 or 80 cents into the breakout. So you know, if I'm fine if I buy say at 32.20, 32.30, somewhere up in here and sell into the 60 or 70 cent range. And the reason for this is not a two day higher gap continuation, but simply because it's a breakout above a whole number of resistance that then runs up. So those types of charts make a lot more sense to trade, right? You should always anticipate. I'm just pulling up charts at random here. I didn't prepare these or anything. I'm a trader. I just pull up my charts when I trade. Like Seagate ran into resistance, bumped its head, against the 42 whole number and then drop. So you should always be anticipating. And what I encourage my traders in the live room to do is look to sell their paper trading positions right under whole numbers. So I'll often say, sell it all here at the 41.90, 41.95 because we're right under whole number. And that's the reason for the exit is simple price action resistance. One thing I want you to look for, and I've taught you many traders this in my industry appearances, both the money show and for the charting software companies, and others that I've worked with is look for wide range tall momentum candles at the right side of congestion areas or bullish cups because often those will lead to a breakout continuation but I'm not a big fan of anything that makes me have to subjectively guess at or interpret a chart pattern I like charts and I don't know if you're the same as I am but I like charts that are simple strong clean easy to trade no guessing or or gambling involved, but you got much better, you got a good strong underlying reason for the trade setup. So gap continuations being a good one as well. So those are the type of things we look for. What's going on in gold and oil? Gold is down. So obviously dust is going to be up, right? Dust, D-U-S-T, taking out a bullish cut breakout up a new 15 day highs. You might want to keep an eye on that. D-U-S-T is in. Okay, so uh, this is, and again, I'm intentionally covering up the ticker because this is for my swing scans members only. They get better charts like this, right? I give you guys some decent charts, but my best charts are reserved for my swing scans members. So if you're not yet a, I still give you good charts, but I give better ones to my swing scans members. Uh, if you're not yet a member of that, I urge you to consider remedying that horrible, awful, terrible mistake. If you're left out of the cold and you're not yet a member of swingscans.com, be sure to join that. And we get together. I got a two week trial, money back guarantee on the trial, so you can try it out risk free uh, and join us, you know, every Saturday because our Swing Scans broadcast is in 10 minutes. And that's a premium event for my paying members only. What else do we have? Oh, yeah, Glenn, I gave that some P numbers. A uh, question from TJ If whole numbers are good for selling, are there any numbers good for buying? I buy right above a whole number, so maybe 20 or 30 cents above a high. So for example, the earliest I would personally consider PG or long would be on this chart, say 45.30. So somewhere slightly above 
not at the 10 cent, not at the 15 cent, often even not 20 cents, but 30 cents or so above a high, above a whole number is often where I'll look to scale into a position. For the higher priced instruments, if I'm trading something that's 60 or $70 a share, I may use 50 cents above the whole number for a swing trade. Right, is the market going to be crashing soon? I have no idea. I react, I don't predict. If I had a crystal ball, that we wouldn't have to do all this pesky risk management and technical analysis stuff, right? But I don't have a, you know, a, a hotline to, to uh, some a psychic, and I don't have a crystal ball. A professional trader is never going to forecast. A, a good professional trader, we just react. So, uh, kind of if then conditionals. If the market breaks 24.52, then I know what I'll do, right? Or if we get under 24.12, then I know what I'll do. And notably, scaling in my inverse ETF uh, instruments. Uh, but in the meantime, we're in sideways congestion. I focus on the strongest gaps and breakout charts that are doing spectacularly well in spite of the market doing not much this last week. And again, that's typical for summer. Kind of a parting thought here for y'all. And y'all have been amazing. I appreciate the big turnout and I appreciate the, the kind words. Uh, before I forget, by popular demand on the, uh, I just did this uh, this past week, I updated the downloadable course area. Let me give you the link to that. To now have descriptions and prices. And also, it took me a while to get these numbers, but to get the run times. They're all on the separate websites, but uh, they're all here. So for my downloadable courses, of which I've got a couple dozen, I updated and revamped this so it's got really neat buttons that are easy to use. And I have the pricing uh, as low as $47, right? And the high end is only four ninety seven, so it's all cheap. It's all most of them are hundred, two hundred bucks, so pretty inexpensive. Uh, and I've got that. Does that help? By the way, I know a bunch of you'd ask for this on the survey. If I could have course descriptions and the length of time of the course and pricing, uh, I have all that stuff on the individual uh, pages for the courses, but I didn't have it all in one handy place. So I took a lot of hours of work this past week to do that for you guys. So now the downloadable course, the instant, and that's cool, right? The top. Uh, and I also separated it out by uh, courses that are good for both swing and day traders, those that are good for day traders only, and those that are good for swing traders only. So that way they're separated by trading style. Plus they have the runtime and the pricing and links to more information where you can see preview videos. Final question before I wrap up. And I appreciate all of you helping me improve the business. I'm a big fan of the TV show with Marcus Lamone. It's called The Profit, right? P-R-O-F-I-T. And he does a lot of small business improvement work on how to simplify and improve businesses. And I take that kind of thinking process, what I watch him do, uh, and improve the business here. So most of my websites are now inside Trade Mastery instead of being all over Tarnation. Uh, and I'm trying to make things much more mobile device friendly so the pages load faster. We just upgraded our server network to a much bigger server this past month. It was like six weeks ago. So now all the websites load faster uh, because we got so much spectacular new growth. There's so many new people coming to the site. My website traffic and sales have been going up. So I like to reinvest in the business and make everything more user friendly for y'all. But let me ask uh, just a quick question. Does that look like a, like a start of an improvement on this kind of thing? Where for these courses, you know, it's got not only the learn more buttons, but I've got the length of time and the very low, low pricing uh, per course. For as low as 47 bucks, there's no reason not to be adding some of these to your collection. Rather than charging a thousand or two thousand dollars for uh, one course, like some people do, I like to have comprehensive courses that are much cheaper. Uh, and also, you get to see preview videos. How many of you agree? By the way, kind of a parting thought here before I wrap up, because I got swing scans in a minute. How many of you think that? Because a lot of traders tell me they complain about other educators that don't tell them how short the courses are or the fact that a lot of the other people have grainy, uh, what do you call, streaming only videos and you can't even download your course that you paid for. You got to log in every time to watch it and use up your data minutes. Stop the madness. There's got to be a better way. I, all, all of, almost all of my courses, except for a couple of the oldest ones that were used to be DVDs, but all my new courses are all the Blu-ray quality WMV video, 1280 by 1080 pixel resolution downloadable instantly WMV video so you can download and keep it and copy it to different devices and all that if you want uh, for you. So you guys think that's good? Well, thanks for the improvement uh, tips. I appreciate that. So 
Got a video with a couple of pretty women. Some Q&A down here. And by the way, now we do take Amazon Pay. It's a kind of a new feature, too. So you can pay with your Amazon account. You don't even have to enter a credit card uh, for these downloadable courses. And these are all over at the, uh, the Shopify storefront. So you can click on any of my courses. And it's kind of cool, right? But how many of you agree, before I leave, that before you buy any trading course from any educator, you should get value from their free events like this one that's actually professional, advanced, actionable, uh, and also that the courses, before you buy any course, because if you're like me, you've probably been really disappointed by other people's courses. You bought it and said, what the F, right? This is like a 90-minute course, and I paid $500 for a 90-minute course or a 60-minute course, and I got to log in and stream video to look at it. Stop the madness. I think that's horrible. Uh, so what I like to do is over-deliver. My courses are often as long as even 15 hours or, or multiple hours for some of them, anywhere from six hours. I tell you how long they are. But how many of you agree that before you buy a course, you should be able to see a video clip preview so you can see what you're buying, plus they should disclose the resolution of the course, what kind of pixel resolution, and how many hours it is? Because a lot of that's missing from a lot of the trading educators because they have low resolution, crappy, short courses that aren't any good, uh, and they overcharge for them. So I like to be the opposite of that. And I make it up on volume because I got so many thousands of traders that I can afford to offer my courses down at 100 or 200 bucks where it's really cheap uh, and high quality and high value based on real money trades that I've done. So that's kind of the distinction. And I wanted to extend a very sincere, heartfelt thanks to all of you for helping me improve the business. You talked, I listened, right? And it's still a work in progress, but I'm always looking for ways to improve the business to help you guys. So thanks so much for participating in the survey. Uh, I listened and took action, right? So we're starting to see continuous improvements throughout the courses, and we've got more courses on the way too. Uh, people say I shouldn't beat up on the competition, but they're so easy to beat up on because they're really horrible. So I like to do it the right way. So you guys take care. You've been great. I'll see you guys in our next Saturday event. we got to do swing scans right now, so I'll see swing scans members momentarily. Bye-bye, everyone. Take care and have a successful week ahead. I'm Ken Calhoun, Trade Mastery, and happy Father's Day to you all. And that'll do it for another episode of our Trade Mastery video channel. Thanks so much for being here. I appreciate it. If you have any specific questions or comments, feel free to add them in the area below this video. Be sure to subscribe to our channel. Give it a thumbs up if you like it, and I'll see you guys in our next session. Until next time, trade with passion, trade with little tiny stops, and trade intelligently. Try to make as much money as you can in your trades, trading the strongest charts and breakouts the right way. Best wishes for success.